have a secret to tell. I count my steps literally in my head, and I'm not sure how or when it started, but whenever I need to take the stairs, or if without music and faced with having to walk, I would start counting in my head. One, two, three. Either my brain is too tired or too bored to think of anything that I have to keep it occupied. Am I trying to block my mind from my crazy thoughts? Maybe, but I guess I just got used to it that I really do not mind. One, two, three. Working in travel, I always recommend my clients who explore the desert to wear sandals and be prepared to exert more effort when walking. Walking on the desert requires more effort because as you step on the sand, gravity tends to pull you backward. The two steps you make eventually would equal to one. I had the exact feeling when my decade-old relationship to whom I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with ended. Where do I start? How can I forget? Every two steps I make forward brings me one step backward. I talk to many of my friends who have gone through the situation and they have been patient enough in offering advice. I also googled how to move on and found countless of forums, books, or manuals out there available for the healing process. I even believed in horoscopes that I checked three different sites a day hoping that it can answer my questions. I have the desire to move on but I was desperate. I was hanging onto any kind of thread that would keep me afloat. I also did what I could to fill as many distractions into my life as possible. I made a list of people I have not seen for a long time because there was no better time to fill up my schedule but then. Most of the time, I found myself laughing and feeling blissful, something I've never felt for a long time during the relationship. I felt strong, inspired, and empowered somehow. Some nights, I wasn't so lucky. It would get cold with loneliness swallowing me whole. That the next thing I knew, I was doing the most stupid thing ever, browsing through old photos and asking myself what went wrong. Old memories flashing through like it all happened yesterday, that all that's left to do was to cry myself to sleep. Of course, coming back was and never will be an option, knowing that I have gotten this far. My family let me move in back again, and ever since I have been sleeping on my brother's top bunk bed. They were my witnesses on how the story started, progressed, and how it led to its demise. My family had treated him like a part of the family, thus I wasn't the only one who was trying to move on. It took them a year to finally accept that I wasn't going back because they thought that we were just cooling off. Still, I don't think I would ever survive without them. They helped me continue counting. One, two, three. Even if shit happens. Writing this book was not to relieve the past love, even if it all began from our story. Looking back was not the intention at all, but these words needed to be released. I wrote this as part of my journey, to fully understand and to create something tangible for all of these emotions, to illustrate how we continue living. What I was trying to create, I had no idea. I was simply a fish going with the flow. There were plenty of times when I couldn't write a single word, but I did what I could. It has been a long process, moving on and writing this book. It was only a year later when I stared myself in the mirror, and despite the dark circles forming under my eyes, I smiled. Do I love what I see? There was no need for further explanation. Damn I do. I love what I see. This book is a love story, but not with a past or present love, but rather the one that we owe to ourselves, the love that allows us to heal. It may sound cliche, but we ought to learn to love ourselves before we are able to truly love again. Easier said than done, but it's possible. We just have to continue counting. Catastrophe We're a catastrophe. Firing words will regret shooting angry glances, leaving the room in a storm, in tantrums and in madness. Tonight, 
Let's go to sleep. Leave the war for tomorrow. Perhaps the next day, sanity will pay us a visit and just maybe we'll fight for different reasons. Save me. When you told me to stop loving you, I look at you in disbelief. How could you shake me away from my sweet slumber of lies? Losing my grasp in your words. It was as if you're telling me to accept defeat, to cease breathing, to stop swimming, and get drowned in the currents, in this sea of shallowness, and no one's here to save me as darkness envelops. Alarm clock. Funny how I spent so many years loving the same person. Or maybe I thought I loved the right way. But then one day, I wake up realizing that you are different. That we are not the same person anymore when we first met. And say our I love yous. What a shame, isn't it, when it's not your fault alone. Because both of us worked and contributed toward the destruction of a beautiful thing. Possibly the best that ever happened. And there's no turning back. Eventually, I guess I have always known that this isn't going to last forever. Was it because I kept on thinking about it, that it eventually came through? Or was it because you gave me the reasons, showed me the signs that were true? To the man who broke my heart, to thousands of pieces, thank you. Because if not, I won't be seeing the world the way I see it now. I confess that I was shaken to the core. Picking up the remains is somewhat tricky, but I'm making it my mission to learn the lessons and make myself stronger. I still dream, you know, that one day the right person would come and take me away from this world, shrouded in misery. Yes, I am filled with regrets, the could haves and the could have beens. Because fuck, if I have a way to do it again, I won't choose you asshole selfish prick. A decade of my life wasted, washed to the drain, waking up the worst monster in me I didn't know exist. Grieving will not be the remedy because I have run out of tears to cry already. You may have left me half dead, half breathing, with fresh wounds still bleeding. The nights may be cold and lonely, but know that I'll be fighting no longer for love, not until I rebuild myself again and entirely heal this big hole you left in my soul. Lost in transition. When destiny plays you, you don't have a choice but to hold on. And despite the emptiness and loss, you must make the right decision. The late night parties may have been fun, endless flow of drinks to forget, getting swallowed by the loudness of the music that sings my story. I can choose to keep on playing, a quick escape from this misery. But in the end, I gotta go home, realizing that nothing is solved. I am in this long layover. Time ticks and yet I'm all alone. Going through it all while wishing, I can make sense in all of these. Drifting. I wake up and feel okay, cook my eggs and shower. On the train, I lose myself drown myself in the music of pain and there i am again drifting in the darkness drowning in my own emotions no matter how hard i try to swim against the current to find the light if it exists shout with all my might until i slap myself again wake up self i say it's not yet the end it's okay to make mistakes of all the advice I have received during the miserable state filled with drugs, alcohol, and men, this was the one that made sense in my head. The words, it's okay to make mistakes, somehow comforted me. I was a perfectionist in the family, the competitive one, thus failing was never an option. Maybe I have known that it won't work from the start, but I was too afraid to wave the white flag. I'd rather die than choose to surrender. What would my family say? What would my friends say? Of course I have friends who broke up or filed for divorce and they were judged by people in a negative way. I did not want to end up like them. 
I have made my decision to stay with this man, so I ought to fight for this marriage, not realizing that the more we both stay, the more we continue destroying each other. Indeed, letting go was the right step to take, something I should have done a long time ago. If you're going through the same struggles, let me give you a fair warning that the coming days, weeks, and months are not going to be easy, so better cut yourself some slack. There will be times when it will hurt so much because you can't help but reminisce about the past. You'd feel jealous of every couple that you see or maybe in the middle of the day while busy with work, you'd end up going to the toilet because you need to hide yourself while breaking down. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Maybe you'll color your hair green or end up on a different bed the next morning. Go for a shopping spree or send a drunk text, anything to self destruct when that happens you only have to remember to forgive yourself you can go through hell but like a boomerang be prepared to find a way to come back you can allow yourself to make mistakes but you also need a time frame a deadline until when you will allow yourself to be in this state self-destruction is a temporary answer but never the solution you have to cut the line somewhere it's okay to make mistakes but you can't choose to make mistakes forever Pick a time when you must tell yourself, enough is enough. Pick up the pieces and start loving yourself the way you deserve.